Welcome back I, from the sessions. I hope that they were informative. You we will be able to do some more networking in about uh, 20 minutes just after our next uh, keynote speaker, which will be Thierry Frémaux. So we are very honored to have you with us. Uh, Thierry Frémaux, hello. Hello. You are the director of the Institut Lumière of the Lumière Film Festival, secretary general of the most important film festival in the world, the Cannes Film Festival. Uh, now, we all know that unfortunately this year it was canceled this spring, but you just held a mini festival. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? It was just a few days ago. Yeah, it was last week and it was a way for us to to be, to be there, to be there in Cannes, to be there with the people of Cannes, with the professionals of Cannes. The city has been very impacted by the, by the pandemia and it was a, a way for us to not to spend a year without being there. And uh, Cannes has been the first big event, uh, cultural event to be canceled in the spring. And we have decided that the, the good world was not Canceling can it was, it was doing can a different way, because the issue is different, and we, we were uh, really on on the idea that uh, after several weeks and months of of experimentation, from us but from also our colleagues of from other festivals, we wanted to be there, and it was a, a very short window because. Right after the last day, despite even the, the terrorist attack in Nice, but the last day was the last day of of of, of the curfew in France, and uh, the first day of the curfew. So we escaped at the last minute, but we spent three days there, and we did the competition, the short film. So, uh, so we could say that uh, finally we gave a Palme d'Or this year in Cannes which is the Palme d'Or of the short films. For the rest, of course, the year is very peculiar. So you showed, I think, four um, films during this mini festival, long, long films, is that correct? Uh... Yeah, uh, four short, short feature films and uh, the two competitions of uh, film schools and short films. Uh, it's, we can call that a mini festival or Again, just an event, a very local event. We were very touched and happy to see the press, the international press, uh, to be there with us. You know, it was funny in May, because when uh, the Tuesday, May 12th, I think, remember, which was supposed to be the opening night of Cannes, uh, and of course it was canceled, but we got a lot of wonderful papers coming from all over the world all of our journalists uh, in the world, very nice, very, very fraternal, very touching. And uh, that's why even sometimes we say we have better papers when we don't play than when we play. And uh, but it was it was nice to see the New York Times, which was which is a newspaper, which is which can be tough sometimes with us, uh, but so so open to what can is and the meaning of a film festival or a cultural event. And the title of the paper was uh, What do we lose when we lose Cannes? And of course, the main word is not Cannes, is what do we lose when we lose cultural event? And six months later, we know that we lost a, word, a lot. And again, not Cannes, but all the music, music festival, film festival, theater festival that we lost this this year and uh, i think it's it's something uh, which proves in a way with that absurdity uh, uh, how it's necessary to live with those events you chose to do um something live why did you not hold a normal festival but digital Never. Why? Because first, a festival, I uh, mean, fest, fet, means that uh, at what point in the play, all together, and we change. And 
we are physically close to each other and uh, and close to the big screen and close to the to the films and close to the work of the artist and uh, and especially because of course we have been asked uh, that question uh, at that time and uh, the first answer is technical is that you can't find for an, an event like can any any distributor, any producers, any studio, any any author who uh, who could be able to accept uh, to send their work on internet with the piracy first, and also with the with what you show that on internet and the reaction. No, can is precious because can uh, we have all world premiere and. Once you cut the light on the big uh, theater, you don't know what will happen. And once you put the light on at the end of the film, you still don't know what will be the reaction of the audience. And that, that is why it's wonderful. Hmm. It's that uh, uh, because of that reaction, which I mainly we of wonderful art, um, and the rumor then the efficiency of the press, of the market, can start. And then for one year, all the film screen in Cannes, and I could say the same thing for Venice, or for Berlin, for the main, Toronto, for the main festival. It's our work to, to launch uh, the work of the artist, and you can do that on internet. On the other side, as you know, Cannes is also a film market the most important film market in the world. And that film market has been made online to, uh, at the end of uh, June. And uh, that was possible. But the, the joy, the collective reaction of a screening, well, in a way, in a word, the invention of Lumière, of the Lumière brother, 125 years ago, the, the, the movie theater, this is uh, uh, unforgettable, and this is not something you can replace. So that's why we have decided that it was not our way to go on internet. And I have a question have from a question one, of, from our one of our participants, uh, Julie, who says, uh, my question to Thierry is, you, ne you say never to can going online, but what do you think of the Venice Film, Film Festival, which did go online this year? No, Venice did not really go online. They did some stuff in, in a way to to replace. But if you take Venice and Cannes, it's very interesting because, of course, Cannes has been, as I said, the first festival impacted and and with the obligation to cancel. But in a way, the face of Cannes this year is still clean and safe. And the festivals who have made a different uh, edition because of the pandemia, the face of the, that edition is not the same. So it was wonderful to be in Venice. And we were all together, the director of the film festivals, but, uh, but of course it was, it was also hard and tough to be there. And uh, maybe, yeah, uh, uh, the person who asked that question, maybe she was not in Venice and on internet and she got some stuff from Venice, but I was in Venice and I didn't get that the film, that the festival was also on internet. But I know that uh, Toronto uh, went to internet to online too. And to Toronto did exist, but not at the same way that than like every year. So that's why we didn't want to, to damage the face of Cannes. Once it was obvious that we couldn't have a normal edition. It was better to, to do a selection because it was one of the decisions we took uh, to make a selection uh, and then to go alongside with the films and to reinvent the process of Cannes this year until the moment we can, we can be back all together there on the Croisette. Mm. Okay, we are talking about festivals, but you, you show movies during your, your festival, and we know that the film industry 
is uh, very much ahead in terms of all of the technological advances, digital advances, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, virtual reality, we know is very important in cinema. Uh, with COVID, do you think that we're going to see more of these technologies? Because that's basically the theme of our forum today. Do you think we're going to see more of these technologies in cinema? I think both. I think that, of course, that pandemia and the COVID is a kind of acceleration of a lot of processes. And, uh, and I think that the, the technology of the future will be more and more, I mean, the world won't be the same anymore. Our world won't be the same anymore. But in the other hand, I think that, and it's my position, and even if I may say so, the, my duty is also to preserve and to protect and to keep what cinema has been and still is. And for example, it's very interesting to talk about that now than, for example, in June. Because after the first uh, lockdown, and during the first lockdown, we had that in France from March till May, um, of course, with the success of the platforms, of Netflix, but not only Netflix, and a million of, of, of subscribers for them. Um, we had also some commentaries about the death of cinema. But since, and even if I'm optimistic because I'm French, and the French situation is, 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 is good or better than some other countries, but since uh, July, since uh, theaters reopened, of course, we saw the audience uh, coming back in theater. So I think that that new lockdown we, ha we are having now, I won't have any more a question about death of cinema from the press, because it's obvious that the cinema won't die. But it's also obvious, as you said, and you're right, that not now, but you know, when we talk about the world after, so we don't know what the world after will be because we are still in this world, in this problematic world. But uh, I think that, that uh, in the world after, things won't be the same. But I was having a discussion yesterday night with Alfonso Cuaron. And you know that we, 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 we had that story with Alfonso. Uh, he made a film called Roma. That film was uh, picked up by Cannes. It was in competition in Cannes. And then Netflix bought the film. So it became a Netflix production, which it was not at the beginning. And then the film went to Netflix, not in Cannes, because we want only in Cannes, in competition in Cannes, films able to be out in the theater, to come out in the theater um, in France. And, uh, and we, we are still having the same conversation uh, about the future, and he was in the same mood. Uh, he's doing a series in London for a platform, and also he's thinking about his new film, and he's hoping that new film will go to theaters, if they still exist, because, of course, I know that in a lot of countries, the economic situation is so tough that, that uh, we don't know about the future of these theaters. But uh, to answer to your question, I'm sorry to be long, but I think uh, we have to go to the future. We also have to keep the past with us. Was already there, I want to say, for the cinema before COVID because of the sector, as we know, is being squeezed by streaming, by technology, by cultural changes. So how are you going to save sort of mid-range movies and dramas? How will they survive? Because all this technology is changing the way we are making movies, the audience is changing. Is it going to become blockbuster, uh, uh, a blockbuster industry? Well, in one question, we have one week symposium to do uh, to, to in, in, in all the things you are mentioning. Uh, first, I think, but again, maybe I'm French, I don't know. I don't think we have to embrace the future in being blind to this future. 
me personally, maybe because of my age, but uh, I'm not really, really, really a fan of what the future is announcing. And, uh, and we all have to, to see that wonderful documentary on Netflix, which is called uh, The Social Dilemma. We have young people who are co-inventors of all the gaffas and so on. It's not a film about 20 years ago, it's a film about five years ago. So the world is, is going very fast. And when you mention the success of the platforms, as I said, we are celebrating, or we are not celebrating, the invention of the movie theater by the Lumia brothers more than one century ago. We will see if we will celebrate the, the birth of the platforms in one century. I'm not sure. I'm not sure because what the platforms are will be something else. What the cinema was, it's still what the cinema is. Now, in your question, which is very interesting, there is two things. Cinema as a social practice, as an economic world, and cinema as an art. Cinema as films. And is the, one of the most interesting questions, which, I, which I'm sad that we never really have it on all those symposiums we have is that it's different to do a film for Netflix, of our platforms, and for cinema. Take Sofia Coppola, she has on the rocks her new film uh, on Apple uh, channel. Uh, is the film different of Lost in Translation because those two films are similar? Or did she make the movie in different mind and way and mood that what she used to do when she do a film uh, for theaters? Uh, we have to ask the question. Uh, we know that Maurice Scorsese, when he did uh, The Irishman, he, he went to Netflix because the film was so expensive that only Netflix wanted to produce it. His next film we will be both platforms and a Hollywood studio. And, but did he change his uh, method as an artist when he did The Irishman or uh, uh, compared to when he did uh, uh, when, when he did uh, uh, those uh, gangster films, uh, I don't know. And uh, this is also a matter which we have to pay attention to. Um, we have an industry, and industry uh, now, of course, we need to have the same life. Uh, my 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 kids, they go to cinema and they have their smartphone. They, 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 they do the same lives in watching film on the computer and watching film in theater. But I teach them to love films in theater. And we have in the other artists and the producers, the money is not anymore really in the traditional cinema world. And in the traditional cinema world, at that time, theaters was contribu were contributing to to finance cinema. Now the financement of cinema is much more complicated. But I can tell you that in Lyon, at the Lumière Festival, we screened Saul, the new Pixar film, just before they announced that the film uh, was uh, going to, to their platform. The film was made for Cannes. The film was made for theaters. Uh, Disney is a very tough situation, so they didn't know what to do with the film. In France, we could have a great exploitation of the film, not in the US because theaters are closed there. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so the film is a piece of art and it's a wonderful film. Yeah. And can, uh, it's can, a different I'm going, I'm going to, I'm film. just going to interrupt you because you're talking about this wonderful film as a piece of art. You talked about Roma, a wonderful, I think, an extraordinary film that I really enjoyed. But you're also saying, I don't want uh, too much uh, digital, artificial aid, um, intelligence in my movies. You're sort of are in between the two. Can't, don't you think that you can make wonderful films that are blockbusters, wonderful films with intel, artificial intelligence, with uh, uh, digital virtuality? Don't you think we can do all of that and also have quality? Because to hear you, if we have that, they're no longer good films. No, it's not what I said. 
And Saul, for example, is a real good example of a digital technique uh, to do an animation film, which is totally different than what Walt Disney used to do. And, uh, and of course, we can have a lot of blockbuster, blockbuster. I think that Black Panther is one of the greatest films ever made by a big studio. And if you take a small French author film, if you take the film of Albert Dupontel, which uh, came out recently, just before the new lockdown in France, uh, I don't think you have even one shot, which is traditional. It's all digital, all, st all new technology. So, of course, no, no. My answer is yes, we can have that. My answer is also that we can have like Philippe Garel, uh, like James Gray, like Quentin Tarantino, also films made still in 35 millimeter. I have one last question for you. What will be the future of the Cannes Festival in 2021? Are you imagining if unfortunately, and we definitely hope not, if we hope that we will find a solution to COVID, but will you have a festival and will you maybe go digital if you can't have one live? Well, first of all, we have uh, three moments in the summer of uh, possibility to report the festival. So it's in May, but if we can't have it in May or June, which is the same, so we will go to July or to August. And that is settled. And of course, I hope that uh, we will go to May. For what I know and for what I know from my own president, uh, who I talked to, uh, I think that in summer 21, the pandemic will be over. So I cross my finger, like you, I guess. And uh, yes, I think that if we have can in next year, it's because we will have uh, the first uh, big event post pandemia before, uh, before the Olympic Games in Tokyo. But you have noticed that they don't talk anymore about canceling the, Olympia, the Olympics because they know that we can have a sport event without audience. We can't have a Cannes Festival without audience. So we don't know, it's too early to think about that. We are preparing the festival with Spike Lee as president of the jury, as it has been announced last year. And we prepare that, crossing our fingers and hoping uh, with a vaccine uh, for, for, I don't know, for the spring and for, for a kind of euphoria uh, but that euphoria, if I'm hoping we will have it, it's also a way to say, no, we don't have to have an euphoria because we have to think about the new world. The new world for the, for the, for the worst, the new world for the best, which is what, uh, what is the subject matter of your day. Thank you very much, Thierry Frémaux. And we all uh, cross our fingers for you and hope that you will be able to have a beautiful red carpet and that you will show us wonderful movies which uh, will entertain us. Thank you very much. Thank you.